You may have watched this video and asked, why is the ground moving? What's going on? This is weird. To that I would say, yes, the ground is moving. The whole earth is rotating very quickly. It's the sky that's standing still. If you're on the equator, the ground below you is moving at about 465 meters per second. That's over a thousand miles an hour. That's really, really fast. That's how fast the earth is spinning. So imagine you're running all the way around a track, like a regular 400 meter track, um, once a second, actually faster than once a second. If you were at the equator, that's how fast you would have to run west in order to stand still on the earth's surface. This video is 23 hours and 56 minutes of time-lapse footage recorded from November 4th to November 5th and then spliced back so that it loops over itself. Now, you may be saying, it looks like it's a whole day. Why is it 23 hours and 56 minutes? And that depends on how you define your day. This time-lapse takes place over one sidereal day, where you're probably thinking of the 24-hour solar day. The solar day is 24 hours long, and if you see the sun at exactly one spot in the sky, and you wait one day, the sun sets, looks like it goes behind the earth, and it come, rises, and then it comes back to that exact same spot, that takes about 24 hours. But if you track a star in the sky at night, and uh, pick some random star like Vega, and you see where Vega is, and then you wait one full day until Vega comes back to the same spot in the sky, then that is actually only 23 hours and 56 minutes. The discrepancy, that extra four minutes, comes from the fact that Earth is spinning, so the quote-unquote fixed stars are all moving at the, Earth, at the rate that Earth spins, but we are also orbiting the Sun. So we orbit the Sun once every 365 days, which appears to uh, subtract, basically, one uh, revolution of the Sun every year. So that extra four minutes is actually very close to 1 356th of a day. Omitting the fact that we have leap years, so these aren't actually integer numbers, the Sun goes around 365 days every year. There's that many sunrises and sunsets, but we have 366 rises and sets of the fixed stars, of any given star in the sky that isn't Sol. You may have noticed that there's one star exactly in the center of this image, and that even relative to the side of the building and the, and the trees and the mountains in the distance, that star doesn't move. So that star doesn't move whether the whole image is spinning or whether only the stars are spinning. That is the North Star Polaris. And it is located almost on the axis of Earth's rotation. So if you take Earth as a ball, and you take the exact North Pole and the exact South Pole and draw a line through that, all of Earth is rotating about that axis. And if you extend that axis north about 330 light years, you hit Polaris. Which means that if you take Earth, we'll have this water bottle as Earth because, you know, it's blue and it has at least one round axis. So if it's spinning like this, and the North Pole is the water bottle's cap, and we take a camera, like this little GoPro right here, and we are standing on Earth and we're pointing our camera, we point our camera at Polaris. Basically what we've done is align the axis of rotation of Earth and the optical train of the camera. So Polaris is so far away that even though the center of Earth is very far away from the Earth's surface where you've got your camera mounted, uh, they're, if they're both pointed at Polaris, they're both effectively parallel. Which means that as the Earth spins, uh, the camera is going to keep pointed at Polaris no matter what. If you have a camera attached to something, that thing that the camera is attached to, from the camera's perspective, is not going to move. If you look at like the dash cam on a car, um, the dashboard appears to be fixed, and the whole world, the freeway, is moving past the camera, uh, but everything that is a part of the car looks like it's not moving. Now, any picture that you take on Earth, uh, you or a tripod that's holding the camera is anchored to Earth's surface, so Earth doesn't look like it's moving, which, you know, makes sense. So if you point a camera at a mountain, it's not like the mountain's going to leave. But if we have a camera anchored to 
Earth, the water bottle's surface, uh, and Earth starts to spin, of course the part of the Earth that is visible from the camera, like the top edge of this water bottle here, doesn't appear to move. In this camera's vision, this is always in the exact same spot of frame, regardless of how the water bottle spins around. But the sky, which is outside of Earth or outside of the water bottle, just like the freeway on a dash cam, is free to move because the camera is in no way affixed to the stars. Uh, in this case, this camera is just pointed at the ceiling with you know some stars drawn on it, but that's as close as I can get. So as the Earth spins around, the part of the Earth the camera sees doesn't appear to change, but the sky, which is past the camera, does or past the Earth, does appear to change from the perspective of the camera. What I've done is that effectively, instead of going around the planet uh, where it's always the bottom of the camera is always the planet. I have basically post-processed the footage so that the camera moves around Earth such that the camera is always facing in the same direction relative to the sky, not the same direction relative to Earth. So here, the ground is below the camera, and over here, the ground is above the camera, but the sky is always in the same spot. So I think this project is really awesome for showcasing the celestial mechanics that literally move our world and gives a little bit of perspective from down here on Earth of the awesome physics going on up there. But uh, if you want to know more about how I made this project, how I made this time lapse and how to set up something like this if you wanted to film one yourself, uh, click on the part three video. This is, this is the first project I've ever had with three part videos. and. Uh, I will explain in that video uh, all of the technicalities of setting up a shot like this and actually capturing a 24 hour time lapse and how to process all of the rotation and stuff like that. Regardless, I hope that you enjoyed this video, I hope that you found the time lapse interesting, and uh, remember to subscribe for more. The camera that I used for this was this uh, Sony Alpha A6000 with this 12mm lens. It, uh, is a full manual lens, even the, uh, the aperture is on a ring here, and it goes all the way down to f2, which is awesome for taking like Milky Way pictures that are single static pictures, but if you're trying to set this camera up so that it can take good pictures in the middle of the night or in the middle of the day, uh, not having electronic control of the aperture is actually, uh, it makes that quite a challenge.